Good morning, everyone. Here's Greg and here's Sarah. Hi. Sarah uh, joined us on a previous episode. You may have seen it for the news update. Sarah is a, a U.S. attorney in Arizona. And today we want to talk to you about tort law and about the ULC. Now, these two words may be things that you've heard over the last couple of years. If you're on different Facebook pages or if you follow the, the drone law and the drone news, it's definitely something that you've heard. And so it's kind of a topic that uh, evolves quickly. And it's kind of a topic that not a whole lot of people understand, I think. So I wanted to do a segment with Sarah and I brought the expert. He has a lot of knowledge. He's been following this for many, many years. And I want to talk about kind of what it is, what ULC is, because we talk about ULC, which is an entity. We need to talk about what they do. And then we need to talk about tort law and kind of what is in the books right now. Everything is a draft at this stage. There is nothing that has been approved, but they're making progress. And um, I think the approval is going to be in July of 2019. Yes. So uh, we want to bring you up to date with what's going on. And um, first, let's get started with what is the ULC? What do they do? Okay, so the ULC was actually founded in 1892. ULC stands for Uniform Law Commission, which is a shortened version of the National Conference on Commissioners on Uniform State Laws. Long legalese word. But it is a non-profit un 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 unincorporated association that's made up of over 300 commissioners, all of whom are judges or lawyers in the, in the industry, even law professors. Um, the purpose is to promote uniformity in law so that states across the nation have similar laws and it's not glaringly different from one place to another. And it also brings some subject matter experts into the drafting of uniform laws, which some states may not have their own. So it's, it's actually not a bad way of making things um, more streamlined across the nation. And, and this is not something necessarily for drones. They just oh, get no. involved with drone this or with tort law in this pretty case. Pretty much everything that's, uh, that's tort law or, or other stuff. For example, the, um, let's see, the UCC, the Uniform Commercial Code, which governs the sale of goods, that was created by um, the ULC too. And now the UCC is a code that most states have adopted verbatim. So it governs sales of goods across the nation. So yes, they do other stuff like like trafficking, human trafficking. They do child custody, um, family, family law matters. So they have pretty much committees for pretty much everything. So this group has been involved with doing laws for a long time and, and helping states develop laws, basically. Correct. And, um, and they recently get involved, recently, actually a couple of years ago, get involved with this tort law. So tell us more about tort. What does, what does this word mean and what does so, tort law mean? So um, tort is a very easy word, but it's a lot misconstrued. First of all, if I give you the legal definition, it's an act or an, or an omission that gives rise to injury or harm to another. So if Greg and I, for example, started fighting on, on, on the screen in front of you, I would be committing assault, so would he. And that, while it's also a crime, is also a tort. Now, why do we care that it's a tort? In tort law, you sue one another, person to person, company to company, and essentially you're asking for money damages to pay for your compensation. This is different from the same action, which could be a crime where a prosecutor steps in and basically jail time and also fines or both. So how does this link to UAS? So the way this is linking to UAS is certain torts lend themselves to um, UAS furthering them. For example, up until now, you could have had voyeurism happen into your backyard with someone using a camera on a pole or binoculars sitting in a tree. Well, nowadays you can attach a camera to a UAS and still perform voyeurism. Or by that same token, trespassing onto someone's land. You can send your drone in there. That's also trespassing if you land on the, on their, um, on the ground in, in their backyard. Um, and also um, torts for um, negligence, flying your UAS carelessly and recklessly and hurting somebody, that would cause injury, that would be also a tort. Um, also, um, if you have another, another type of tort is um, when you have a defective product that ends up injuring you, and then we call those strict liability torts. So you've got essentially three kinds of torts. So the intentional torts, which if me and, and Greg were to slap each other, that would be assault, that would be an intentional tort. Um, there's the negligence torts where maybe my drone accidentally hits you in the head. That's a negligence tort. And then we have strict liability torts for defective products and of things of that nature. Okay. So a lot of, a uh, lot of this would apply to drones. Yeah. And so a couple of years ago when this came up and, and I think this came up on the radar because this group, the ULC, 
um, was trying to pass or, or to create laws that would restrict the flight within the first 200 feet. Is that yes. what it was? They were trying in the first drafts of this um, tort law, trying to create a tort of aerial trespass. They were trying to make a bright line rule of 200 feet, saying that the 200 feet and below would belong to the person who owned the property, so they could claim aerial trespass if the drone was not higher than 200 feet. That's how we started this ULC a couple of years ago, and it concerned so many people. Uh, you just have to read the comments from all the people that have been flying commercially. It would totally hamper their operation. So we have to keep in mind that the 200 feet above your house are probably FAA controlled airspace. There are probably classes of airspace that commercial UAS have the right to be in and do their job. So that bright line rule was not a good idea. Mm -hmm. And luckily in this final draft, which they're going to vote on in, in Anchorage at their annual meeting, um, in July, um, f they've taken that 200 foot bright line rule away. Yep. Yeah. And that's just that just happened with the recent draft uh, as of June or, or late May or early yes. June of 2019. So, yes. so this is kind of a win for the industry. I know a lot of uh, big companies uh, get together and, and wrote uh, very strong letters uh, to this ULC group trying to get them to change their mind. And I know uh, there's been a lot of people in the industry involved with this. So uh, this is a, a big win. And this is what happens, I think, when when uh, drone users or US users get together and, and have a uniform voice, which I think is uh, is positive. It is very positive. It's very positive. So going from here, um, let's talk a little bit about what happens with this law. Let's say that something comes out of this and this could be presented to the states and the states could decide to put this into their books as, as a law, right? That is correct, Greg. So um, at this meeting in, um, in July in Anchorage, this is their annual um, ULC meeting, where they're going to look at uh, the approval of this final draft. And they need, let me get this right, a vote by all the states that come to this annual meeting, with each state having one vote, and they need a majority for it to pass which is no fewer than 20 states to approve it. Now, once it's approved at this meeting, it then gets sent to all the different states in the country so that the state legislatures, when drafting their own rules, can incorporate this. So that's the process. Now, some states have already decided with their drone laws, UAS laws, that, for example, Arizona is one of them, that they are preempting municipalities and counties and local governments from making any different rules. So kind of the state law will be it for the entire state. So you don't have an even bigger patchwork of laws coming out of each state. Some states have done that. So when they have done that and then they choose to incorporate this, it'll be uniform across the entire state. And hopefully um, that will guide legislatures that may or may not know how to rule on a certain way when it comes to drafting laws for UAS. Yep. And this is something that we talked on the side that it's very important because at this stage, there are states that do not have that preemption law, which means that every city, every municipality out there can basically create whatever rule they want. And sometimes um, you get to think about, you know, this is a small city council that may not yes. know anything about drone law. And all of a sudden are trying to prevent people from flying their drone or, or going into a certain airspace, which they don't control. And then they create laws that can be enforced although people still believe that they are enforceable yes. and, it, and it just prevents people from, from flying in areas where they're completely legal to fly. And then legal battles ensue. And, and we've seen this uh, quite a, and yes. there was Newton, you New, said? The city of Newton in Massachusetts had a similar thing happen. They in, enacted a, a city law and two pieces out of it were overturned by a judge because they went not only against what Massachusetts can and cannot do, but they actually were against FAA law, which the federal law pretty much has ultimate jurisdiction over the airspace, safe and efficient use. Yep. So we saw that. We don't want to see that again. No. This might help. And, and, and for you as, as a drone operator, make sure that you're familiar with your state. If you live in Arizona, like we just said, there is a preemption law. There's other states that do have the same thing. Make sure you do some research and find out if that exists in your state. And if it does and you live in a city that is trying to put something in place, then you have some grounds to fight yes, this. And, and, and you know, the, the best way to fight it is to meet with the, the, the city officials and talk to them and show them the, the preemption law and educate them. And, and I think, you know, this is, this is, we've talked about this before, this is a new industry. This is something that is constantly changing. And, and we need to do our best as 
uh, stewards of this industry. And if something happens, we need to go and present information, not in a confrontational manner, I think, more as, a, as trying to educate people on, on what drones are and what the rules are. And, uh, and hopefully the, the city listens and, and make changes. And if they don't, then I guess that's a different battle after that. Then they can call you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so where do we go from here? So this, this is going to be approved in, in a few months, hopefully, and then, and then we'll have some changes. Um, is there anything else that we haven't discussed in here? Um, I was just going to add a couple of things. I'm, I know this may sound strange, but I'm not in favor of creating laws that we already have laws for. Um, most of the time, our problem in this country is we can't enforce all the laws we have because we have too many. So um, I'm just going to pick on Arizona for a brief moment and um, let you all know that most of, most of our um, tort law is already in, in our ARS, the Arizona Revised Statutes Code, and a lot of it totally works with UAS as it exists right now because of the language of w how we've defined doing these torts, committing these torts, we have let language out like device or instrument, which is open to interpretation. There's no definition of in our code. So I am of the belief that we already have some of these laws in place, ULC aside. And I think that if you take a gander down ARS title 12 and 13, so you can look at the civil and the criminal side of our code, you'll see that there's a lot there that encompasses trespass and voyeurism and things of that nature already. So um, same with if you have a, um, a child, a minor who uses a UAS incorrectly, we already have tort law that says that the parents are liable for up to $10,000 worth of damages. So I, see that we already have that in place mm -hmm. to keep us safe. Yep, something that's that's already been put in, and probably the same for every state. I mean, would think- I can only speak to Arizona where I'm licensed to practice, but yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure that most states have similar. I have the same thing. So yes. so this is kind of, uh, yeah, just redundant, a lot of redundant law. law Some uh, of it is, yeah. yes. And, and like you said, there is already an issue with enforcing the laws that we have. Why try to create some more? This is actually something that I talk about in the remote ID video that I made because uh, re the idea with remote ID is capturing data to actually make better policies to prove that whatever we're trying to fix may not actually be a problem mm -hmm. because we don't have we don't have any data right now as it is to uh, to show anything. Actually, a piece of uh, of news that we didn't cover in the previous news segment was uh, the fact that at Gatwick, I don't know if you saw that article. Uh, there was actually no proof that there were any drones at any time. I is... actually have it from the person who was hired to go in there and help out the cops, and. Um, they did not recover any drone or any mm. person flying a drone. Yeah. So that may have all been media blowing a lot of things out of proportion. Yeah. But um, I find it yes. interesting that there were, I don't know how many hundreds of journalists oh, yes. and never a picture. Yes. <laughs> Cops and yes. everything out there. So kind of like um, UFOs, huh? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, all right. Anything else that we can add? Well, that, that sounds about right. Thanks for joining us. I'm sure you have some questions. Leave them in the comments and uh, we'll be happy to go over and uh, Maybe even create a new video if there is enough questions of things that we haven't covered. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for joining us Thank and uh, see you guys later.